Hi, it's Phil from Delphi Technologies. In this how-to video, we're gonna be changing the front discs and pads on this Audi A3 e-tron. The first step, let's open the bonnet and remove the wheels. So first step is we'll just unscrew the brake fluid cap and this just breaks the airtight seal. We don't wanna remove it completely because any dirt can get in, so we'll just leave it on the top there. So now the wheel's off, just two things to do. The first is to focus on the disc location screw. So first step is we take our impact driver, we place it into the screw, twist it round, and that's the screw loosened. Lastly, move the disc into a better position to give us easier access to the brake pads. So the next step is to remove the caliper from the caliper carrier. This is a hybrid electric vehicle. Just be aware that some manufacturers are now requiring you to depressurize before using the diagnostic tool, before you remove the front brakes, like we've done for rear brakes for many years. This vehicle doesn't require that, so we're gonna go ahead and remove the bolts. So we're just gonna apply this hook just to take any stress off the brake pipe when we do remove the caliper itself. So hook's in place, we can now ease the caliper off and then hook it up like that. Next step, we're ready to remove the brake pads. So I can simply pull them off. You may have to use a screwdriver if they are particularly tight, like this one. So we've got the screwdriver, we're removing this off. Important to note that we're, on, we're replacing the discs here, so it's okay to lever off the disc. If we weren't replacing the discs, then you need to be extra careful. There we go, pads out. So now we're just gonna remove the caliper carrier bolts. Large 19 mils going all the way through the hub into the caliper carrier. There we go. We can straighten the hub up. Finally, remove that dislocation screw. Remember, it's, that screw doesn't hold the disc on, it just locates it. And then lastly, we can take the disc off. Now, if like this one, the disc is seized on, um, because often they seize onto the hub. We're gonna have to just tap the disc here as we go around to be able to loosen it off. So just keep working it all the way around as you keep hitting it. So the disc is freed off now. We can now remove it. So disc's off. Now before fitting the new one, we need to make sure that this surface is cleaned. So I need to make sure that we've got a wire brush on the drill and we just go around and we clean all of the hub spotlessly clean. Particularly paying attention is to the flat surface, but also to the angle surface just there where it actually sits on. We're just gonna put some high temperature grease in some key locations. The first is gonna be around the hub here, just prevents the new disc from sticking on to the hub like we saw with the old disc. Excellent. Let's get the new components out and check them against the old ones. So a quick check first to make sure that the new parts match the old parts. So let's take them out of the box. You can see the new parts have the shims built into them. That prevents the squealing noise that you often get with brakes. So I'm just checking them against each other. Looks good. Let's just check the discs now. So two major checks. The first is the diameter them together, diameter looks good. The second check you would like to do is the height. Looks good, ready to fit. Now before we fit the disc, we're going to retract the brake caliper piston. We're gonna do that before the disc, just in case we get any fluid leak, we don't want it going on our new disc. So the caliper's down, I'm gonna get the brake piston spreading tool into there. The brake bottle is on. We can attach the bleed. We're not gonna get loads of fluid from this, just a small amount of fluid. We can crack the bleed nipple off. And now we're free to compress the piston back into place. And this is the to get the clearance to allow us to fit the new brake pads in place. And you can see that the old fluid is coming out of this pipe rather than pushing all the way back through into the master cylinder. So the piston's back, completely back now. We can remove the tool. 
and then lock up finally the bleed nipple. Take that off and rehang that there. So we can now fit the new disc and the securing screw. Note that these particular discs are Delphi GMX coated, so you don't need to clean them down of all the transport oil before fitting them. So we're ready now to clean the caliper carrier, just where the, the guides are, and then refit it back to the car. And the areas we're looking at cleaning is here and here, which is where the, the pads will slide in and out of the carrier. Now the caliper carrier is fully clean, where the pads slide in the guides, we can now refit the carrier back to the, the vehicle. We're going to give ourselves a little bit of extra space on that side, and then bolt that back in. The last thing is now on this part is to torque those bolts up to the correct figures as we've checked in the technical data. Let's go ahead and torque that up now. So when it comes to fitting the new pads, this particular set, and it's a good example, has got an arrow on it showing the direction of standard rotation of the wheel to when you're going forwards, and it also has a very small cutout there. So make sure that this cutout goes on the inside where the piston is, and then the other one goes on the outside. Step one is we're just gonna apply some high temperature brake grease, just where the guides will slide in the caliper carrier, and then we can fit it to the car. So that goes on the inside. Now the pads are back in the caliper carrier, we can refit the caliper itself, making sure that we don't twist the brake pipe wire. With the new bolts supplied in the box, we can attach the first, first one at the top. That gives us the swing. And then finally the bottom one. We'll nip them up and then we'll apply the correct torque. So now we've nipped up and tightened those up, we're gonna set the correct torque figure. We can remove the hook, which has been supporting the caliper. Finally, straighten the wheel up. So we now pump the brake pedal until the brake pedal goes hard. Once we've done that, we can then screw the cap back on under the bonnet, and then finally refit the wheel. And that's it. That's how you replace the discs and pads on this Audi A3 e-tron. Don't forget to make sure the brake fluid level is correct and check out our videos on social media. Thanks for watching.